Hey guys, today we're back in the 2021 Jaguar F-Type R all-wheel drive convertible. We have a special guest in town. Tedward is here and he's driving a Lexus LC500. We're gonna do, just to, we're gonna go for a drive. I'm gonna take you on the Topher test route. And after this, we'll drive the LC and we'll do a little bit of a comparison between the two cars. Basically, I just wanted another opportunity to get behind the wheel of this Jag F-Type. It is honestly one of my favorite cars that I've driven this, this year. It is just a monster on the street. 575 horsepower, all wheel drive, eight speed ZF automatic. We have summer tires on here today, unlike the winter Pirellis that we had last time we drove this. So we'll actually have some grip. We can put some of that power down. 305 30 R20s in the rear and 265 35 R20 in the front. Supercharged, five liter V8, all wheel drive so you can enjoy it in the winter time. Super comfortable, but compared to the LC, this is an absolute monster. It really, really has some performance. And finally, Jag has kind of figured out their handling, their suspension, their chassis tuning, and this F-Type is a great example of that. This is Tedward's first time driving an LC500 on the street. On you the only street. drove one on the track. Yeah, and it's like this isn't a track car that makes no sense. Yes. But it is actually really impressive on the track because this 10-speed transmission, my goodness, does it hit the next gear it aggressively. It barks. Like, it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> and it's wild that it barks even in comparison to the Jag that you guys are about to ride in because that thing is a maniac. It rips. We're about to hit a bridge here in a minute. Yeah. And we can let these let these two sing. Well, it's unfortunate because you're not going to hear me at all. I, <laughs> I feel kind of bad because all you're going to hear in your video is this. That is the very <laughs> loud younger sibling. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is Grandpa. It's interesting, though, because philosophically, these cars are kind of similar. They're comfortable. They're all about $100,000. What's the price on this? I want to say it's $112,000. $112,000. So the base price on this is one oh six, but as tested, it's one twenty. dollars So yeah. about the same money. I think it's tough, though, because the problem is at that price point, you're starting to compete with some heavy hitters. And let's be honest, a Boxster nicely optioned around $90,000 looks pretty dang good. And it's more of a track star. So and you get a manual. A, yeah, and if you're looking for a sports car, that might do the thing. Whereas this, it's always tricky to sell a grand touring sports car. I have a little bit of trouble swallowing a hundred thousand dollar Boxster, but I guess the 911s are one fifty now, so I think that's if it. The, if this is your only car, if these are your only cars and you're commuting in them, and you just want a convertible, which I think is what like normal people, maybe not the viewers of our channels, we have enthusiast viewers. Yeah. I think if you're just enough where you like cars, but you want a comfortable ride to work with the top down, this does the trick. This is the ultimate California cruiser, or. You've got your track car already, and this is like your fifth or sixth car that you mm -hmm. own in the garage. Mm -hmm. This is the weekender, man. I can attest, this is the perfect California cruiser. The wow factor may not be there, like the numbers on the piece of paper don't quite add up to some other stuff in the price point, but you drive it and you fall in love with it. It's just such an incredible character. There is nothing like this engine on the market today that I can think of, really. Everything's gone turbos, everything's gone supercharged, everything's yeah. gone a little wonky. Uh, which is fun because they're fast as heck, but I gotta say, this brings me back to the E92 days, and it's a 2022 with a warranty. And That's I true. think it'll hold its value, unlike usually like very expensive Lexuses. These haven't dipped that much. It's, it still looks expensive, so it it'll probably stay that yeah. way. All right, let's go drive them. So there it is from Tedward on the LC500. We've only spent a little bit of time in these cars this week. I think this Jag is still one of the most underappreciated vehicles on the market. You can still go out and get one of these for reasonable money in the 60s and the 50s for a used example, but I really like some of the changes, the refinements, and the improvements that Jaguar has made to this latest generation F-Type. The front end looks really nice, the new design language is absolutely gorgeous. And I do have to make an amendment, I need to make a correction from my previous video, uh, I said that you are not able to use the paddle shifters in normal in the normal drive modes. That is incorrect. There is a menu deep in the little center digital cluster that enables you to use the paddles in either sport mode only or sport and drive. So that's nice. A couple owners chimed in and corrected me on that and I appreciate it because it actually kind of changed the driving experience of this F-Type. So right now, we're just, we're gonna roll these windows up so we can get slightly better audio. 
We're just in normal drive. The ZF 8-speed makes pretty conservative shift decisions. This is a really nice cruiser too. Despite all the crazy performance that this puts down, it really is comfortable. The seats are fantastic. The ride quality is excellent. We have adaptive dampers. Even on these 20 inch wheels, there's not a lot of NVH or cabin intrusion. Pretty minimal rattles. And uh, it's a very comfortable car. It's, it's not maybe on the same level as the Lexus LC500, but you could daily this, you could put a ton of miles on this. It would still be a fantastic GT car. And on our rough Michigan roads, it really, really starts to shine the more miles you put on it. One of my favorite things about this F-Type is that it has such a split personality. It turns into an absolute maniac. You flip down into race mode, put the gear selector over into sport, and you have a just a growling, burbling, barking monster in your hands. Exhaust valves open up around 3,500, 4,000 RPM. Below that, it's pretty quiet, pretty muted. Chassis balance here is absolutely phenomenal. You can really balance this car on and off throttle, get it to change character mid corner, turn in is sharp. The steering rack is really fast in this and it's super light too. If I had one complaint, the steering might be a little bit too light and it kind of makes this car feel a little bit too darty and, and active at the limit. But once you get used to it, you can really drive this so quickly and just with it has such poise but also that's backed with a really nice level of softness at speed this is a pretty comfortable car to drive with the top down i'm getting a little bit of wind buffeting around my head it's definitely not as silent as the lc lexus has some patents on their aerodynamics and uh, top down airflow system and I've never driven a convertible that has zero wind buffeting at any speed. The LC achieves that through just some magic. I don't know how they do it, but this Jag is pretty comfortable, especially with the windows up. Uh, tires aren't too loud. Speaking of tires, speaking of tires and all wheel drive systems, I love how rear biased this F-Type R all wheel drive is. You notice on that entrance ramp, just Coming around that corner in second gear, you've got a little bit of a wag from the rear end. DSC traction, everything was off. And you can just balance it on that throttle beautifully. Even on 305 Performance Summer Tires, it's braking traction. That shows how much power this thing has and how well it's put through the all-wheel drive system. My takeaway after driving this F-Type after a week on winter tires was that, yes, it's all-wheel drive, no, it hasn't taken any of the fun away from this chassis and from this car compared to the old rear-wheel drive F-types. It's added a little bit of safety, but sometimes when you add all-wheel drive to a car like this, it dulls the experience, it makes it feel too heavy, and somehow Jaguar has figured out how to make this entertaining and still a little bit of a, you know, a monster at the limit. It's got fangs, it'll bite you if you're not careful. speeds you don't have to be pushing it hard to really enjoy the poise of this chassis I just love the balance that Jag has achieved here with the suspension tuning you turn in it's soft and it just it feels like your alignment on this the front end alignment is just perfect there's zero scrub there's very little understeer
it would be nice to open that exhaust valve all the time so you could really hear that exhaust note under 4,000 RPM. You're not hammering it all the time to listen to that V8. It's also cool because there are some unpredictable pops and crackles from this F-Type. Not like when it first came out where every time you let off the throttle on the overrun, there was a pop and a crackle. Now it's a little bit less predictable. All right, let's do a quick launch control start here. We'll brake boost this. <laughs> it is an absolute rocket ship. bounce off the rev limiter. <laughs> I will say you do still have to be very careful with this car. The last vehicle that I spun out unintentionally was an F-Type. It was a rear wheel drive V8. And I've got to say, this still has that looseness that in some ways it's very predictable at the limit on throttle, in other ways it can catch you out. There's a ton of torque from the supercharged V8, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can get you into some trouble. There aren't a lot of vehicles on sale anymore that feel like they want to bite you, but this is one of them, and I give Jag credit for not tuning out all the enjoyment from this chassis. This is about all the exhaust you'd ever want from a car like this. It is such a great exhaust system. No drone. The tone is beautiful. It really accentuates that V8. The only slight bummer is that you don't hear a supercharger. There's no whine. While we're cruising here, what else can I say about this Jag? Meridian sound system, fantastic option. Sounds really nice. Um, maybe not as sweet as the Mark Levinson and the Lexus, but just a really nice overall premium sound system. We've got some really cool features like these HVAC vents that rise out of the center area here, almost like they're rising out of the screen. That's a pretty cool party piece. And then when you turn everything off, they lower in a dramatic fashion. I really like the ergonomics of this Jag. It takes a little bit of time to get used to the setup of this car, the button layout and everything, and even the infotainment. But once you do, it's a pretty easy to live with, straightforward setup. Again, spending another week in this, I've really enjoyed it. So good. I kept up that time. Yeah, you did. You were driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these cars are so much fun. We're taking a drive all around Michigan this week. We're doing a lap of the entire state. 
about 1,200 miles in total. And we're, we've got four convertibles. So we've got this F-Type all-wheel drive R convertible. We've got the LC500. We have a BMW M4 X-Drive convertible. And we have a Mini Cooper S JCW, which is a little bit of an outlier in the group because uh, we couldn't get our hands on a Porsche. So uh, we're going to have a pretty good time. We're going to have a fun week this week in all these cars. We'll give you some more driving impressions to kind of sum everything up after the end of it. But I feel like uh, this Jag is going to be one of the, uh, it's probably the fastest, it's definitely the fastest car here. I think it's got some legs on the M4. The M4 convertible, I just filmed a video on that a few days ago. It feels a little heavier, a little bit more sluggish. It, that adding the all-wheel drive system and making a convertible has dulled that car in a way that this Jag hasn't suffered. So that's a good thing. And of course, the LC is just one of the best convertible GTs I think ever made. It's such a comfortable, wonderful car to road trip. My trip on the uh, coast of California really confirmed that. Let me play you the sound of my people. F-Type and the LC, I think, also, uh, that's a tough one. Which rev limiter is better? The LC has just a bonkers fuel cut, and this Jag isn't far off. <laughs> oh, man. This would be such a great weekend car. It has the thrills to really kind of make an impression on you and your passengers. It's comfortable, it's livable as a daily. It's got a decent trunk too. And it's just smiles for days. It's such an enjoyable package. Get out here, debrief a little bit with Ted Words, see what he's got to say. Yeah. One that was like a nice, like, ooh, like a 180. Yep, the I bumpy was one. Giving this as much, I was, I know you had more left. I had nothing left. Like that was it. That was me going. <laughs> 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 it was like every ounce of effort I could put into this car to get it around that corner. That's an interesting corner because the pavement changes. Yes. And grip reduces slightly because yes. it goes from asphalt to concrete. Yes. <laughs> I've got to say this Jag still has its fangs. It is not a car to be trifled with. You should not take the power lightly. With this power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Just like the old V8 F-Types. Like, it hasn't lost any of that Dude, I'm craziness. Blown away. I'm blown away. This is like, I, it's so insane because I do, in my head, even while I'm driving it, I'm like, it's a grandpa car, you know? This and LC, then, yeah. yeah. And then there it is out there shining, revving out to red line, hitting that rev limiter for the hell of it. Yeah. These both have these Jekyll Hyde split personalities. Fat. Crazy. I love it. It's so <laughs> much fun. All right, well, since we're in the middle of a construction site, we're going to get out of here and uh, drive this LC a little bit. So this will just be a quick segment on this car. We've done so many videos on this. One of the things that always just blows me away by the LC500 is how completely quiet it is at speed with the top down and the window's up. There is zero wind buffeting. 
my hand isn't getting wind from any direction until I raise it almost above the roof line. It's insane. <laughs> this 10 speed is so much fun. Gearing's a little bit tall on both of these cars, but that's okay. At least you can rev them out on the downshifts and the blips are just wonderful. Oh, remember that, uh, that fuel cut at Redline and the F-Type? Let's compare. <laughs> I think the LC has it slightly beat. Just a little bit, barely, just a, just a titch. A wonderful sounding V8. One of the last naturally aspirated V8s on the market. Those barking downshifts are just sensational. Really the only place where I could knock this car is this silly infotainment with a touchpad. It's just a little bit wonky. It's a little bit weird. It takes some getting used to, but you can adapt. At least we get CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. And we do get some physical controls for volume control, track selection, radio media. Once you have everything set up and figured out, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty plug and play. But there is definitely a bit of a learning curve to the user interface of this LC500. I will say too, left to its own devices, this 10 speed auto is pretty good. It's great that you can just take over at a moment's notice with the paddles, request a couple downshifts and you get them. This torque converter automatic makes some lazier shifts under light throttle, but once you get into it, it just bangs into the next gear. This is also a pretty wild interior, especially in this spec. These seats are super comfortable. There's just leather everywhere. All right, we'll flip it into manual mode. And around we go. It's actually pretty approachable and easy to drive at the limit. Bit of safe understeer, unlike the Jag, which just wants to drift everywhere, even though that's the all-wheel drive car. <laughs> and then we'll turn traction back on here. At highway speeds, guys, we have adaptive cruise control. We have lane keeping assist. The only light breeze I can feel in here is coming from the climate control vents. It's really, really something. Normally when I film convertibles, I have to wear a set of these. These are just earmuffs, they're 180s earmuffs. And in this LC, I can run them without them, take them off. <laughs> it's really wild. To sum up the driving experience in this car, I think for what this is and its intended purpose, it is just about perfectly tuned and developed and set up. The suspension is the right amount of softness. It, it performs well enough in Sport Plus mode when you get the adaptive dampers to do their work. You get enough technology, you get enough safety features in this car to kind of satisfy the modern tech itch. But it still has this old school feel that with that naturally aspirated V8. The 10 speed auto really lets you enjoy the gear spacing at higher speeds in this car. I would like the one, two, three gearing to be a little bit shorter, but Honestly, it's not a huge deal. A couple years ago, this LC500 convertible won our Car of the Year award between the Topher Channel, Winding Road, and the Daily Motor, and for good reason. 
It really is one of the best vehicles on sale today. And I think both of these cars are a little bit underappreciated for what they are. Anyway, lots of stuff to like, a lot of fun miles ahead of us this week. Really glad I was able to share these two convertibles with you today and uh, get a little bit of a Tedward cameo in the video too. It's been a long time since we've seen each other and it's great to catch up with this guy. He, uh, we are, we're YouTube friends, right? That's how we met, we met on YouTube. I like found Tedward on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that'll wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Take care.